Hey everyone, Mr. K back with another video doing checkpoints today. This one will be slightly different because we are going to be taking somebody else's code and modifying it a bit for our needs. We are working off of Sean Spaulding's checkpoints video. And before you do anything with this video, go back, watch that, check it out. And when you're done with that, if you'd like, come back here and we're going to modify it so that the room doesn't restart on every death. If you um, get yours up and running, and this is something uh, that unfortunately didn't show up in his video, is if you happen to kill an enemy, and this is his download that he provided for everyone, if you kill somebody, hit the checkpoint, and then die, the whole room goes back. So if you have any pickups in the game or any progress, basically, aside from your position, gets completely reset. So, you know... Depending on what kind of game you have that can be seen as some kind of exploit like if none of you know point system And there's point things laying around you can just keep racking up the points on just by dying over and over again So we're gonna fix that so when you die you just jump back and the room continues as is and just to show you That I do in fact have that up and running oh, Don't look at that yet I mean, You can but We'll talk about it Same thing. So far, no difference, but now there it is. Instead of the room restarting, I'm just jumping right back to that position and everything carries on as is. So let's go into how we're gonna get that done. What we need to do first is, we do need to go back and take a look at the big culprit, which is the script, the death script. So the death script has two options. If there is an active checkpoint, execute this room go to function or else restart the room. Now restart room, that's obvious, that restarts the room, but room go to actually has the same effect. The only difference is, is that it restarts a room and also goes to a room at the same time. So it's basically like a room restart combined with going to a room. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we have to do is we have to replace these things now when we remove this this is going to have the side effect that we will no longer be able to traverse back rooms based on checkpoints so in essence when you go to a new level that will act as a checkpoint in itself so the one downfall at least unless you know we want to develop this further and by all means in this version, there is no going back rooms. You will, worst case, go back to the beginning of the level, or you'll go back to the last um, last active checkpoint in that level or in that room, okay? So, let's talk about what we did here. Uh, first things first, we had to change our global checkpoint, um, this if statement. The old if statement just checked to see if you hit a checkpoint ever. What we need to worry about is if you hit a checkpoint in the current room. So if you have hit a, a checkpoint in the current room, the idea is go to that checkpoint. If you haven't hit a checkpoint in the current room, then go back to the beginning of the room. And that's where this code is down here. And this code up here is for going to the actual checkpoint. This should look a little bit familiar because this came directly from um, his the player script. If we take a look at, and this is back in his version, player has a create event, and in here, pretty much the same thing. I had to specify the object player, but it's the same exact thing. In fact, oh, the if statement's the same too. Makes sense. Um, we're just taking this and putting it directly into the script death, skipping this whole room go to. So what happens is in his version, you die, you go to room go to you room go to is executed and then all of this happens we're just skipping this room go to step anyway sorry for bouncing back and forth so much anyway so if there's an active checkpoint and making a checkpoint active is exactly the same as it was in his video nothing changes we're just changing the positioning stuff so if there's an active checkpoint in the room go directly to that checkpoint if there's not if you manage to die just before, or not just before, just before you get to a checkpoint, we need to go back to the beginning. Now, unfortunately, there's no um, variable 
that stores that for you, at least not that I know of, but it's a very easy way to get around that. In our create event, I have two variables. And by the way, you'll notice that that Sean's version of it is, um, his little code from here is gone because we put it in the script test. So you don't need it anymore. These two variables, start X and start Y, and again, you call them whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But the idea is, since this is a create event, what these two variables do is they store the X and the Y position when your player is first created. So start X and start Y will hold on to that position until you need it. So we need it when there's not a checkpoint active in the room. So that means take the object player's X, move them to the start X. Take the object player's Y, move them to the start Y. And that's it. Just to show it to you again in action, and we'll even go to the second room as well. Oy vey, what is taking so long? Is it up and running? I oh, too many clicking, too much clicking. Kill an enemy. Die. I do have to show you a couple things. This is pretty much the end of it, but something that you have to be aware of. Shoot, I'm going to restart this. I'll show you the second level on here. So I have an active checkpoint in the other room, but back to the beginning anyway. So that's the one downfall that if you like the fact that you go back a room, that's gone. And there are two other things that you do have to worry about because of this change. I wouldn't say they're necessarily negatives, but they're things that you have to think about. One is a death loop. So I got this checkpoint here with an enemy by it. So I just keep dying over and over and over again here because I keep spawning on this checkpoint and there's an enemy that happens to be there as well. You can see me jumping around because I'm trying to move and I keep dying. You might want to design your levels in a way that checkpoints like this one over here, which I can't get back to because double jump isn't working, um, like this one right here, you, it's in a safe space, in a safe space. So you don't have to worry about dying over and over again while you hit the, while you go back to the checkpoint. So you might want to keep them out of the way, away from enemies. On top of that, the last thing you got to worry about is this. Here's my power up. Oh no, now I can't. I mean, I can. I don't know, maybe it's designed in a way. Oh, yeah, I can. The point is if you have any necessary power ups, make sure they're respawning because if, and this is just good design to begin with, because if your player, for whatever reason, goes back because, because of a checkpoint or just fails to make the jump or whatever in time, make sure the power up comes back so they can do it again. So that's that. Remember three things to watch out for you can't go back rooms. Put your um, checkpoints in a safe location so they don't go through any kind of death loop. Your players don't go through death loop. And make sure your power-ups, necessary power-ups are respawning. Your unnecessary ones, that's up to you. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.